This is uh, a piece of flash fiction that I wrote um, not too long ago. It was, um, it was, uh, oh, I don't know, a little get together that we were having and we were writing flash, flash fiction um, that was inspired by uh, Lovecraftian worlds. And uh, this is very, very loosely uh, inspired by Lovecraft, but um, nonetheless, I think is uh, a lot of fun. So here we go. It's called Shoggoth Stew. As with all fairy tales, this story has a happy ending. What most chroniclers won't tell you, and which I delight in sharing, is that it's rather a matter of perspective. If the wolf eats Red Riding Hood, it's a happy ending for the wolf. And with that deliciously morbid thought, let us begin. Once upon a time, there was an old Sasquatch named Squawk. Despite his moniker, he was a rather quiet fellow, only shrieking or bellowing when frightened or provoked. In that way, he was much like my cat. In all other ways, he was decidedly not. He was seven feet, nine inches tall, covered in thick, mossy brown fur, and had an appetite for strange and unusual cuisine. Okay, he had two things in common with my cat. His meal routine was rather rigid. Maple Bar Mondays, Taco Tuesday, etc. On Sundays, he had soup. Now, Squawk loved soup above all else. He liked possum soup, tree bark soup, tortoise soup. When he could get his mitts on some fresh fish, that was even better. Octopus soup, Estonian rumblefish soup, Kraken Crunch soup. He could eat it morning, noon, and night. Soup, soup, soup. Squawk was approaching his 800th birthday, so he wanted to find something uniquely suited for this very special occasion. He had heard of a kind of stew made by the crone on top of Necromancer Mountain. It was said to contain a very rare ingredient that, when eaten, unlocked doors to hidden worlds. Now this appealed to Squawk since he spent the last 650 years in Oregon. Squawk's Uncle Billy once told him that the old gods lived in the ruins of old buildings in Europe, so Squawk naturally assumed that if he ate the stew, he'd pop up in Scotland or maybe Wales. He'd always meant to try haggis. Well, dear reader, Squawk did not end up in Scotland, or Wales, or even Ireland. He journeyed 11.4 miles, according to Google Maps, through the woods, across the river, and up Necromancer Mountain. He ate four goats and 19 toads on the way, but nothing could spoil his appetite for Shoggoth stew. The old crone was surprisingly mild-mannered and didn't question Squawk's request, hurriedly spooning out eight bowls of stew for the winded Sasquatch, one for every hundred years he'd been alive. She watched eagerly as Squawk devoured them, two at a time, only stopping once to dislodge a pesky tentacle from his throat. As the last eyeball slithered down his esophagus, Squawk felt more satisfied than he'd ever been. He thanked the crone heartily and stood to go, but he didn't get too far. Squawk's eyes rolled back in his head and suddenly he felt weightless and a bit horny, to be honest. Eons flitted through his mind at warp speed, opening it to secrets of the past and promises of the future. He saw civilizations collapse and worlds form. He saw mighty Cthulhu seated upon his throne, wings spread wide like the mighty eagles of Squawk's homeland. But oh, that home seemed so far away now. He blinked twice, and it was over but he had lived a thousand lifetimes. Squawk turned to the old crone and stared at her blankly. Who was this wrinkled woman atop this strange mountain? What was this strange rocky terrain and the slippery green blades between his hairy toes? Come to think of it, who was he? Or she, or they, or it? Seeing his bewilderment, the old crone began to chuckle to herself when Squawk took his first tentative steps and tumbled headlong down the mountainside. She roared with laughter. He didn't even know to be offended. Unable to comfortably stand, he began to crawl. 
slowly and deliberately, as if drawn by a powerful magnet back into the woods. In the months to come, he would regain fragments of his memory, but it only caused his frustration to grow. He knew infinite worlds and sacred secrets, but he no longer knew how to fish or set a fox trap or make a soft bed in tall grasses. He would lie awake at night, lucidly dreaming of his other lives as he slowly lost touch with his own reality. Squawk died on his 801st birthday. His hunger had grown desperate and so he wandered out of the woods in search of something. But by noon, he forgot what that something was. And by midnight, he collapsed at the foot of Necromancer Mountain as the cackles of an old crone echoed in the distance. The end. Thank you.